Good. <coughs> Good. <coughs> Good morning! Hi Cubies and Newbies, I am Sunshine and this is the ABQ Method for Solving Rubik's Cubes. Let's play! Uh, this is not a speed solve method, this is not a few smooths challenge, this is simply uh, <laughs> for <laughs> cubing for non-cubers. Uh, those who just want to know the secret, to, don't want to put in the hours uh, of training and memorization to be able to be a speed solver. Uh, if you just want to be able to pick up the cube and put it down solved for no matter what it was, this is that. Uh, the there's the AB method uses two patterns and only two patterns. Uh, formula one is a four moves. Formula B is eight moves, and formula A is used to bring a piece to the top. Formula B is used to move three pieces around, and that's all you ever need to do on. Uh, in order to, that's all you need to do in order to solve every complexity cube. It also works on every complexity minx. And it's fun! So, join me. Okay, something's wrong. I checked for, see who is in my, who's in my chat room and I disappeared. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's there or not, but uh, a quick overview before I jump into, uh, I've, I've broken my cubes down into steps, and I've been doing them a step a day, but quick overview, regardless, I'm using five because regardless of which cube you have, it, it works the same. Formula A, like I said, you hold the cube in your hands, and you look at the front of the cube as if it were a spreadsheet with rows and columns, and looking at the, the formulas, the arrow represents the single slice that you're going to be moving, and the line represents the rest of the slice. So, the rest of the cube that you're ignoring, because you're always only moving one slice at a time. Unless your pieces happen to be joined to get, happen to have lined themselves up automatically, and then we can do the larger pieces if you want to. But, so, um, formula A is one row, one column. Usually, the, for, the, f for the corners, it's the bottom row and the right column, because I'm right-handed. I could have done it the other way if I wanted to. But, bottom row. This piece is going to move to the top, so the first thing you're going to do is move this piece away from the action. Second piece is you're going to move the space where it wants to land down. You're going to move the piece into the space, and the piece in the space up. And what happened was this piece came up here. Um, these two switched places. These two also switched places. These three edges did, did a thing. But really, you don't need to know about that because when done in, in, when done in sets, it only mo only affects the, t the, la the layer that you're working on, only affects the pieces you want to move. So, again, so it put it back up there, but it twisted it around. Let's pretend I wanted it that way. And then I continue doing formula A. And when done in groups of six, the, everything goes back to the, the way it was, except for the layer that you've affected. So, if you have two corners that are in the, that are correctly placed but not twisted correctly, uh, they'll be twisted in opposite directions. If you have three three of them, they'll all be twisted in the same direction just because of the mechanics of the cube. Uh, to reset that, it's sa same thing. I'd hold. I have. I'm going to affect the cute corner in the top front right under my right thumb, and out, down, in, up, out, down, in, up. Out, down, continue until it looks the way you want it to look, and then slide it out of the way to preserve it. And we're going to continue with this other cube that can also be twisted. And like I said, a multiple of six means the rest of the cube is untouched. It's at the top, and we're done. So that's formula A on the for the bottom row in the right column. Does works on corners, works on bringing this corner to the top. Formula, if you use the middle row and the middle column, again, this piece is going to come to the top. So I move this piece away, the space down, the piece into the space, and the piece in the space back up again. We use this row and this column, and that gives you boxes. So out, down, in, up. Uh, one way moves it one direction, twice has the effect of moving in the opposite direction. 
and three times gets you back to where you were. Okay, so that's formula A. You can use it for the entirety of the first phase if you want to, um, but uh, you cannot move it, use it for other phases because it affects all six phases at the same time. So that's formula A, four moves. Formula B is eight moves, and it's one row, always the top row, and two columns, and working we, working outward it solves the if you use the two outside columns it's one for every if, if you notice for every left there's a right for every up there's a down uh, so it's a mathematical zero it's a commutator it's only going to move three pieces the rest of the cube is going to be untouched so top row and outside columns looks like this up up down down and it moved three pieces moved three corners and only three corners again um, once is clockwise twice has the the effect of counterclockwise and three times is back to the beginning wherever whatever your cube began as so uh, that if you use the if you alter which columns you're using you're altering which which pieces you're moving and rather than have to memorize these two columns do this thing uh, you just pick the piece that you want to move want to affect and the cube dictates what those pieces have to be what those columns have to be. So if I, if this is a piece that I want to move, and I want to bring it, it uh, formula B for, for edges moves a piece from the top front to the side front. Uh, so if this is the piece that I want to move, uh, then if I want it to land over here, this is my where I want it to land is my first column, where it begins is my second column, and it's the top row. So that, that would look like this. Out, up, in, up, out, down, in down beginning always moving away from where it wants to land and these three moved okay if I, if I do it again it's the effect of having moved in the other direction and once more it'll go back to solve so this is how you line it up you line it up so that sorry you line it up so that the corners match the front and the top color dictates which direction it's going. So again, out, up, in, up, out, down, in, down. This is used up and not working properly. This is my, uh, this is the stuff we used back in the 70s to uh, stick posters on our wall. I use it just to demonstrate so that you guys, your eyes can follow what I'm doing. If I wanted to move this piece to the top, I would first I would line it up so that something advantageous is going to come down, and then I follow this cube with my with my with my formula B. So it's the top row, and then I follow this cube. So this cube goes up. I do the rotate the top until it lands into a different column. On the diagonals, you have to be a little more careful than on the other ones, but so that would be in the same column. I don't want to do it that way. So so move it to a different column. Second up, reverse, down, reverse, down. Set the top, and it moved three corners. It looks three edges, three centers. Looks like it uh, moved two, but two of them were orange, so you couldn't tell the difference. So I'll, I'll demonstrate again. I'm so you line it up so it's advantageous. First up, move it into a different column. Second up, reverse, down, reverse, down. And again, this piece did not come here, it came over here. So you're always moving three pieces, uh, always only three pieces, which is all you ever need to do. Uh, sometimes it looks like you, there's two pieces that need to move and only two pieces that need to move. That's called a parity. It's a lie. You don't have to memorize parity algorithms. You don't have to play with parities unless you want to. Um, parities are always caused by the same thing, no matter what the parity looks like. It can look like look opposite each other, it can look adjacent to each other, it can look on different faces, different, uh, it doesn't matter. If there's a parity, it's because this the slice that touches your parity is a quarter turn off. Make that one quarter turn, and now instead of having two edges out of place, you have three or more, and you can fix that, and then reset your centers if you've done your centers. I always do my centers last, so that quarter turn is easier to then... <laughs> Easier and quicker than whatever parity algorithm you've, mem you've memorized. So, now, let's see who's here. Who found me today? Good morning. Hi, you guys. Thanks for joining me. So that's a quick overview for how the, how the pieces work. Now let's demonstrate. 
Unless you have, if you have questions for me, uh, or you want me to go over anything in particular, or something didn't make sense, or I, <laughs> or I said the wrong thing because I know words but don't use them properly. So the first thing I did, first things I did here, one, two, three, there we go. Okay, so doing the corner, I do the corners first because no matter which cube you're working on, all of them have eight corners and this method works on all of them so you can solve all of them the same way. So I, first thing I do the corners and then the, the, the two by two is then solved and the rest of the cubes uh, now have those corners now dictate what color is going to be what color each face is going to be so you can know right away uh, Where each where each piece can be placed to place it correctly rather than the reduction method where you line things up Solve the centers line up the edges and then pretend it was a three by three uh, that, that way you don't actually know where any piece lands until the end and so you can't actually it This one does not spend time looking for any particular QB, like, oh, here's a red, yellow, where's the other red, yellow, so I can pair them up. No, uh, since I already know where it's going to, to look because every cube, the part of the corner set, I just, when I find the red, yellow, I throw it in the direction, and when, the, when I find the other one, I throw it in the direction, they pair themselves up. So I don't have to worry about that. So that's a little bit of inspection uh, that you guys can skip if you go with this method. Uh, but like I said, it's not a speed to method, so don't worry about it. So corners are, when the corners are done, the two by two is done. The next thing that I did is I did the opposite the opposite edges because I, I did first I did you can you can be color neutral, but I, I always I start with yellow because all of my cubes have a yellow, not all of them have every other color because they're all <laughs> colored differently. So again, formula A brings the corner to the top, brings a piece to the top. Formula B moves them around, and F, A brings it back to the top again after B moved it around. So I do the yellow corners, then I do the white corners, and then having trained my eyes to be looking for the yellow and white, I continue that in working with the doing the opposite edges, the yellow and white edges. I hold the cube left and right, and I find a, a white or yellow in the middle somewhere, and I throw it out into the direction it wants to be until there's no more yellow or whites in the middle, and then I assess. So these all have, these all have the opposite edges done. Not this one to demonstrate. So, the next thing, the next thing that all of these have in common that are still I'm still working on is the op the side edges. That, so that would be this cube. So I'm going to do the side edges on all of the cubes, and then this one will be done, and the rest of them will have the cage done and just need the centers. So um, we've already established that uh, the way to do the corners, we do the side edge, the edges. It moves the piece from the top front to the side front. So, um, so I'm going to take uh, take my white and I'm going to put it face down. I'm going to abandon the white, but the white is going to be there as a visual clue for me for um, which columns I'm working on if I'm working on a lot of columns rather than just a few. So. Opposite edges are done. White space down. I'm going to look at the side. I'm going to look individually at each side. <laughs> this one's correct. This one's not. So I'm going to displace it. I'm going to apply formula B to this piece, but I'm going to do it by placing one of my top fronts into the side front, which will move this piece out to the middle, where I can then work on it. So white's going to be face down until the until the side edges are are finished. So. Formula B, top row. First column is this one. The second, this one will tell me what my second column is. And so there's my second column, down, down. And I so displacing the yellow as I place the side pieces. That yellow will eventually find its way back to the top. And when it does, I'll reassess. In the meantime, I'm looking for the piece on top that's not yellow. I'm ignoring all of my yellows, and I'm going to work with. I'm looking at just this piece. So holding the top row, I'm going to rotate the entirety of the cube. I've already lined up my center row, so you can see. I'm going to rotate the entirety of the cube until the corners match the front. So corners match the front. Uh, determine which direction it's going. The green and orange is going to land over the green orange something corner, not the green red something corner, so it's going in this direction. So first move is move it away from the action. Second move is where I want it to land. 
first horizontal is away from the action, first vertical, yeah, is where I want it to land, and then reverse it, and then the second up is where it began, and then continue down and down. Every other, every other left, every other move is horizontal, every other horizontal is reversed than the one before it. And so now there's another piece on top that's not yellow, and that becomes the only piece that I care about. I'm going to place, and I'm placing the edges between the corners. So I rotate the corners to match the front, determine its direction. It's going this way. So this is B as written. Uh, B to the going to the left is B as written. Going to the right is each B movement is mirrored. Uh, if that confuses you, you can just place each piece to the left, only to the left, um, and place them either correctly or flipped as you go along, and we can unflip them at the end. But, so top row, first column, second column, away up, in up, away down, in down. That piece is placed, and another piece that's not yellow becomes our focus of attention. <coughs> Corners match the front, it's going this way, away, up, in, up away down in down and we look and our yellow found its way back to the top so we line it up and now we assess we look to see whether whether the edges are complete and uh, they either will or won't be and then we, we look at the top to see whether the yellow is uh, is correct or whether that's parity and if it's a parity then we single quarter turn it and we're done and then we solve the sun the edges and we're done so this one so we've done the corners, opposite edges, and side edges, and this one's done. And we did the corners, opposite edges, and now we're doing the side edges still. So white goes face down, and I find a piece, find an edge piece that's incorrect, and I'm going to displace one of my yellows into that spot. So that the piece that was incorrect is now where placeable. Holding the top row. Uh, my center is lined that would be lined up if I had one, but I don't have one for the. My, I don't have an absolute center for these, so we'll we'll figure that out later. So corners match the front, and it's going in the blue direction. So this way. So first column, second column. Start by moving away. First up, second up, first down, second down, and we just place pieces one at a time. That one was already magic automatically there. Find another piece on top that's not yellow to the top color. You can do it color neutral, but I, I do cut white and yellow. Um, corners match the front. It's going in the green direction. So away first up, in second up, away down, in second down. And find another piece on top that's not yellow. I say find, but it's always the back of the one that I've just placed. So it's not really a find, is it? Uh, corners match the front, it's going in this direction. Slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down. And we just move three cubes around. Like another piece on top, there's only one that's not yellow. And with you need larger cubes, you can go, instead of doing just one column at a time, you can go all the way through up to and including the middle, but you don't want to go past the middle because that way if there is a parity, I'm forcing it to show up here. So away up in up away down in down that's placed and this this other yellow is going to bit bop back and forth right here it's not going anywhere it's just going to bit bop back and forth here yellow came back to the top so now we assess corners are back together uh, this one looks correct this one's correct this one is not so this one's i still have a cube here i still have more cubes on the side that need to be placed so i'm going to use formula b to displace this one to the top so I can keep working on it. This one will end here, so let's bring the let's work the yellow that I'm going to displace is going to be one that is incorrect if I can. If they're if, it, if they're already correct, doesn't matter. But if there's an incorrect one, that's the one I'm gonna place. So I'm gonna place this one here. So we go up, up, down, down, and again we have a white piece on top that's not yellow, so we keep going. Corners match the front, this direction, slide up. Slide up, slide down, slide down. Other piece on top, not yellow. We don't have a daughter's not Lisa. Okay, corners match the front. It's going in this direction. Up, up, down, 
down. Yellow found its way to the top again, so we set the corners and we need to assess. These ones are correct, these ones are correct, these ones are correct, these ones are correct. And the yellow is happily placed, it doesn't have a parity, so we can go on, we can go for, move forward. Uh, if we don't get a parity on this one, I'm going to demonstrate this by solving this parity. I have one preformed pre, pre for you guys. So, white goes face down. I'm looking at my sides. Uh, they, these are, these can all be displaced. So I'm going to displace from, the, I'm going to displace the yellow down, and I can do it one row at a time, or I can do all the way up to the middle. But before I do, I make sure my, my, if I have an absolute center, it's placed. So, away up in, and I'm going this piece, but also this one, and then down and down. So. The chances are now that all of these can be displaced before I, the yellow comes back to the top. And again, these, these yellows are here, and placing these is going to bip them back and forth. So we find a piece that's on top that's not yellow. White stays face down until the cage is complete, the, the corners and edges are complete. So we go quarters, match the front, going the, the orange direction. Okay, so whoopsie, whoopsie stick. Away up in second up, away down in second down, just one, one layer at a time unless it be, it's convenient to do more. Corners match the front, it's going in this direction. Up, up, down, down. Another piece on top. I go left to right because I'm a, an American, that's how we read. Corners away, up, in, up, away, down, in, down. So you said it's up, up, down, down. Here's another yellow, here's another not yellow right here, this one. Let's try this one. Okay. Corners match the front, it's going in this direction. Up, up down, down, and one of our yellows found its way to the top, but we're going to continue ignoring the yellows until all of, until for as long as there's anything on top that's not yellow, so we're not going to pay attention to it yet. Corners match the front, going in this direction, and this one wants to move as well, so I'm going to place, I'm going to displace this one at, at right now because I can, um, so I'm going to place these together as one to, to displace because both of these want to be displaced. So up, up, down, down, and then find a piece on top that's not yellow, and one at a time, bring the corners to match the front, it's going in this direction, up, up, down, down, other one not yellow, Corners match the front. It's going in the blue direction. So up, up, down, down. Pause. Let's see. If you've just joined me, <laughs> I am Sunshine. Welcome to the ABQ method for solving Rubik's cubes. Uh, so we're, we're placing formula A is four moves. Formula B is eight eight moves, and we're. We're placing, we're just picking a piece that's wrong and throwing it in the direction it wants to be until we run out of pieces that are wrong. So there's not a lot of plan ahead. Uh, corners match the front, it's going in this direction. Up, up, down, down. Find another piece that's not yellow. Bring it corners to match the front. It's going in the orange direction. Up, up, down, down. Again, so it's always formula. It's, <laughs> it's always A or B, and formula B always moves three pieces around. So uh, it's predictable. Corners match the front. It's going in the blue direction. Up, up. And again, the white is there to remind me which direction I'm going in case I drop the cube midway or the cat jumps on my lap and distracts me which direction I'm going. Um, so now we look, 
the yellow found its way back to the top again. We don't care whether it's correct or incorrect as long as the yellow found its way back to the top again. So now we're going to assess. So um, we're looking at the side corners now. The white is still happy and nothing's happened to the white. We're looking at these, these, these si this side, this edge is done. This one, it is not. It still has a piece that needs to be to be placed. It still has an incorrect piece. So let's throw, let's displace the yellow into that spot and then continue working. So um, I'm the yellow that I'm I'm going to be particular about which piece, yellow piece I'm displacing. I'm just going to be the one that's already this incorrect rather than over one that is correct if I if I have a choice. So putting this yellow into here, up, up, down, down. Find a piece on top that's not yellow. Line up the corners. It's going in this direction. Up, up, down, down. Another piece that's not yellow. Keep going. Corners match the front. It's going in this direction. Up, up, down, down. Okay, yellow came back to the top, so we assess. These ones are correct, these ones are correct, these ones are correct, these ones are correct, and no parity, so we're all happy. Okay. Let's do it one more time, this last this last cube. Uh, this is a Whitting and 3 by 3 by 9 and it, th this formula works on this as well. It works on every every n by n by n cube and some non some non-standard cube works on mirror cubes, works on probably got. <laughs> so um, I'm looking again we're, we're, white, white goes face down I'm looking at the sides. The only side I care about right now is the middle one and so this one is supposed to be between the green and the orange so this is supposed to be green and orange. It's not so this is the piece I'm going to displace. So I find a yellow and throw it down into that spot and then I'm going to work with that spot. So it doesn't matter. I mean it, Theoretically, I'm using three three columns while I'm doing this, but and and if they're not if uh, they're shaped wrong, I apologize. Someone's mowing the lawn right outside of me. Um, if you guys can hear me, okay, I'm going to keep going. Uh, if if there's a problem, I can do a do. A, I'll be right back <laughs> until it goes away. All right. So my, are you, this yellow is going to be boppity back and forth. And so we have a dis yellow displaced, so now we're looking for a piece on top that's not yellow. Um, I'm see you can see three, three columns here, I'd only care about the middle one. So I'm ignoring the other colors. So this one is blue and red, so I hold the top and I bring it, oh, see I'm going to line up my, I'm going to line up my absolute center first, which I forgot to do, but I still can. So this green and red, I bring it, line it up to the, so the center matches. Corners match the center, corners match the front, and it's going in the blue direction, so it's going this way. Still formula B, up, up, down, down, find another piece on top that's not yellow, okay, uh, bring it to the corners match the front, it's going in the red side, nope, that's green is not blue. Corners match the front, it's going to the red side. Up, up, down, down. Find another piece on top that's not yellow. Okay, it's orange and green. Uh, bring the corners to match the front. And it's going in the green direction, so it's going over here. Up, up, down, down. And yellow came back to, to the top, so now we assess. Okay, so set the corners again. Okay, so um, this one, it's in the right spot, but it's twisted, so I need to need to affect that. So I'm going to place, to displace this incorrect piece into this spot, so I can place it correctly. So slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down, and then here it is. I'm going to bring it. Corners match the front. Determine its direction. Place it correctly, and that's going to bring my yellow back to the top. Up, up, down, down, and line up the top again and assess. So the top row 
is, is correct. I did that with the opposite edges. The bottom row is correct. I did that with the opposite edges. We're looking at the center row now. And so this one, one, two, three, four sides, this is correct. So we've done the <laughs> we've done the cage on everything. But the three by three is now solved as well. And for everything else, like I said, uh, all that's left now is the centers, except for this one. This one still has some edge pieces to be done, and this one, <laughs> this side can also be done with Formula B. From this point forward, do it working on the edges for the for the nine side uh, requires a minor adaptation for Formula B because uh, instead of moving it this way and then working with the columns uh, because it's banded, I, I can't do that. So every horizontal it now becomes a double instead of a single, and then I can work with with the two columns at a time and only two columns at a time. So that's all for that that's that's the step is done. I'll do this one and again. Um, real quick how the edges are going to get how the centers are going to get solved. It's also formula B. Uh, we're just going to pick a piece that's pick a piece that's incorrect on our front. Hold it on cube so that's on front. Uh, the direct the color it is is going to land on top so we line so we hold the cube that way and then we follow this cube the cube that this piece around on our formula B. So first thing is horizontal move is to line it up so something advantageous is going to come down. Uh, there's no red on the top, but there's a opposite blue on the top. So we're going to bring that one down. So we follow this piece along. We go up, slide the top to a different until it's in a different column. Second up, and then reverse down, reverse down. And because we've done the edges already, the, the that's the visual clue for us which columns we're working on if we ever get lost. And so ladder and repeat, that's what I'm doing. I'll come back and do that tomorrow. So um, thank you for joining me. I have a couple of uh, have a couple of telephone errands I need to run. So thank you for <laughs> spending your time with me. Uh, and if you have any non-cuber friends uh, who wants to <laughs> who wants to play, bring them, we'll have fun if they wanna. And in the meantime, go have, be nice to yourself, go have fun, go walk in the sunshine if there is any, and uh, drink lots of water, and <laughs> be happy, because you deserve it. So I'll see you guys tomorrow, and go have fun. Bye.